are the Chicago Bears done making moves in free agency? Well, I'm here to give you that answer right now. What is going on, y'all? Fox Sports all back at it with another video talk. And of course, some NFL. So if you're an NFL fan, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. A lot of NFL content, uh, everything free agency so far, but uh, talk Bears and the NFL at large. So go ahead and, and follow uh, me also on my social media, my Twitter, my Instagram. Uh, go ahead and do so and, and make sure you turn on your post notifications for the channel after you subscribe so you're notified every time I drop a new video, okay? So you obviously see the whiteboard behind me. I'm going to be breaking down the Bears cap situation, what it's looking like, and whether or not we should expect anything more in free agency than what the Bears have done. Okay, let's start with the signings so far. So I've listed on the board all of the players the Bears have signed thus far in free agency. We've got Jimmy Graham, Robert Quinn, Nick Foles, Artie Burns, Jordan Lucas, and Barcavius Mingo. Okay. Um, keep in mind, uh, what is that? One, two, three, four out of the six players are defensive on the defense side of the ball. I will get into that a little bit later, but just pointing that out. What I've listed here is not actually the contracts that they were that they were given. Like Jimmy Graham was given a two-year uh, $16 million contract, uh, you know, Robert Quinn was given a five-year $70 million with $30 million guaranteed. No, this is their cap space number for 2020. Now, it's about to get real complicated, so I don't want to lose you guys. The NFL salary cap is very complex. It is not like the NBA salary cap where it's fairly straightforward. You can do a lot of things like restructure deals, uh, you can move money to signing bonuses. Like there's so much you can do in the NFL salary cap. So that is why I want you guys to know that. And so what I've listed here are the cap numbers for uh, all of the Bears free agents that have signed. Now this is from Over the Cap. Uh, this is a website that tracks uh, the NFL salary cap spaces for all teams in real time. Um, as, as quickly as they can. Um, I don't have one for Artie Burns here because his deal was not announced with the contract details. I mean, it was just given as a one-year deal. Here's the thing. I'm assuming it's uh, going to be around $1 million. Again, um, Jordan Lucas and Barcavius Mingo, both one-year deals and around a million each. So I don't expect it to be much different for Artie Burns. So just going to assume here that it's also a $1 million for his contract. Okay, so... The question, how much salary cap do the Bears have? Well, if you want to answer that question, over the cap says the Bears have $2.5 million left in salary cap. But that is without the Artie Burns money because the contract details weren't announced and without Bartavius Mingo because that was just announced. So if you add another $2 million, to that, I mean, do the simple math here, you've got, you know, half a million dollars left. So does not seem like the Bears have any money left. But here's the thing. Remember I told you, you can restructure stuff in the NFL. And the contract that I want you guys to pay attention to is the Nick Foles contract, okay? This is his cap number for this coming season, but... As far as his contract, which was restructured, he got it restructured for $20.25 million. We're just going to round it about $20 million, but you get my point here. And um, so with this contract uh, at $20.25 million restructured, the Bears and the Jaguars probably worked out, and again, we're assuming here, probably worked out some sort of a... Uh, deal where the Jaguars take on more money for the Bears to give them a fourth round pick. Again, this is also something that is being proposed by uh, some of the guys over the, over the cap. So I want to give them credit for it. Brad over there uh, pointed this out. Again, this is not, you know, confirmed or anything, but let's say the Jaguars took on a lot of the money and signed and took on like $8 million as a signing bonus, which you can do. That would leave the Bears with about, you know, $12 million, give or take, 12.25, whatever. Um, and so instead of the cap number here being 15, if this is 12.25 over, you know, the three years, whatever he has, I mean, that number lowers a lot now. 
So again, I know it's, it's very confusing here. The point being is the money can be moved around. Also, we haven't heard about Allen Robinson's extension. And again, I've pointed this out in other videos. Usually an extension would mean you're, you know, giving money and you have less money to give for other players and the salary cap. But when you uh, sign an extension, again, you can move players money into a signing bonus. And so that's where you can add salary cap. Okay. It's confusing, but that is the NFL salary cap. So you can actually get more money by extending Allen Robinson, which the Bears should already have done. They should be doing it if they haven't. But that could potentially add more to the bear salary cap. So again, from what Over the Cap is saying, from what all of these websites are saying, and, and from the math that I've done, the Bears have pretty much ran out of money, okay? I mean, they pretty much have exhausted all of their, um, you know, spendings from even after the savings of cutting Leonard Floyd, cutting Taylor Gabriel, and Principal Kamar. So they're pretty much out of money, but because of the Nick Foles restructuring and potentially Allen Robinson, the Bears can still probably find a way to, you know, get about, oh, I would probably say, I mean, this is going to be a big range, but three to nine million dollars, maybe somewhere around there. Uh, but again, that is being very optimistic. If I were to be more realistic, I would say the Bears don't really have any cap space left. And so to me, then the bigger question, obviously, of are the Bears done making moves in free agency? Yes, they are done making major moves in free agency. Uh, no, they could still make minor moves. These are one-year deals. They could still be making way more moves like that. Um, and so to me, that's the biggest thing here. Unless there's some restructuring that happens, don't expect any more major moves. Ex you can expect minor moves. So it's a yes or no. Okay, yes, the Bears are pretty much done with major moves, but no, they could still be making minor moves in free agency okay so there you have it with the bear situation now the other thing i want to point out which i mentioned earlier a lot of our free agent signings have been defensive players which tells me what the bears had needs before free agency okay did they meet all of those needs so what were the bears needs before free agency in terms of position do you guys remember that? Let me remind you, okay? I'm going to try to put it in order as best as I can. We definitely needed to address the O-line, okay? We know that. Right guard to replace Kyle Long. We needed to address tight end. Again, maybe those two are interchangeable. Tight end number one, O-line number two, but you get my point. Then we needed a quarterback for sure, okay? Then we wanted a pass rusher, okay? Let me just say linebacker here as well. Then we said cornerback, safety, cornerback to replace Prince Mukamara, safety to replace Ha Clint Dix. Okay. And then wide receiver, maybe, running back, maybe, but not as much priority as the other positions. So for agency, I mean, we've made a lot of moves. I've explained the cap situation. It looks like our free agency is pretty much done outside of minor moves. Let's see what we addressed. Jimmy Graham. We didn't address the tight end position well, according to me, in terms of signing Jimmy Graham. But, okay, we addressed the position. Fine. Robert Quinn definitely addressed the pass rusher position. Okay, we got one. Nick Foles definitely addressed quarterback. Artie Burns, again, not saying he's going to start alongside Kyle Fuller, but we did address cornerback. Same thing, Jordan Lucas, not saying he's going to start alongside Eddie Jackson, but we did get a safety. Okay. Barcavius Mingo, again, depth, special teams. So, when you take a look at that, what is left on the board? Well, you've got offensive line, you've got wide receiver, and you've got running back. What does that mean? Do you see a pattern here? The pattern here is, come draft time, I believe the Bears will go offense heavy it could be literally all offense because again it looks like in free agency defense was the priority and the positions that we have left to address are on the offensive side folks here's the thing you guys might be wondering why'd you put receiver and running back here well here's the thing 
at receiver. Behind Allen Robinson, are you really that confident the Bears have that position figured out? Anthony Miller had a very up-and-down year last year, and he's a little injury-prone. Behind him, what do you have? Jawan Wims, Riley Ridley, a bunch of inconsistent, very young guys, inexperienced? Hmm. So you certainly could use some depth there. Then we take a look at running back. What happens if David Montgomery goes down? You're really going to hand the backfield over to Tariq Cohen and Ryan Nall? Like, I, I, I'm not sure about that. So again... I believe you can still use this. But again, obviously offensive line is important. So come draft time, I believe the Bears will go ahead and draft for offense. Because in free agency, they want defense. So there you have it, folks. Hopefully that helps out a lot. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please make sure to subscribe as always. Thanks for watching.